The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this last uh, trading day of the week for us. Not for the market, but for us because uh, we're going to be closed tomorrow. So don't forget, I believe today is the last day of the Salvation Army. 25, hey, 25%. This is really an amazing thing. You get a tax deduction. Go to the front page of TFNN. Check it out. It is really a tremendous thing. Win, 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 win all the way around. So uh, let's just get to the market. Dow's down 36 at 19,905. S&P's down 6 at 2258. The comp index right at this particular moment is down 22 at 54.46. The VIX is just barely moving high. It's up 16 cents at 11.43, way under the 13s. Uh, we're looking at the, uh, I'd like to just do this step by step. You know what I'm going to do? This is the E-mini. And it's making in the 120 minute chart, look, it's making that rectangle flag formation that can have an arch within it, especially when it's up at highs. That's exactly what it's doing. And it is trading. I said to my subscribers this morning, and also I said to the den, the chart I usually show of the E minis, that there was resistance at the 2260 level and support at 2251 is going to be really important to uh, maintain. It's at 2254 right now, down 625. What's really interesting about this, uh, no, uh, 54. Yep, that's right. So what we're looking at is a situation where, and this is very important. What I, I'd say to subscribers is that if the Dow is going to break into a new phase on, an up, on the upside, it really needs to go straight through uh, not just 20,000, really 20,150. It has to establish itself nicely into the 20,000 area. Once it does that, a whole new dynamic takes place. It's that whole psychology. Uh, are you going to pay $1.99 in the ones rather than two something in the twos? And if you're looking for a bargain, you're really looking for the, the ones, even though it's one penny less than 20. That's the whole psychology that was developed in the 1950s, 50s, 60s that said 199 instead of 200 is really what people will be looking for. And that kind of happens with the market. Can you imagine for people who have not been in and they missed it? I know so many people who, who were not very heavy in the market and then um, lightened up. A lot of people that I've actually spoken to over the last couple of weeks had said to me, we lightened up during that. And one particular, in particular, one person in particular who's really very good, he's a physician, a retired physician. He does, I mean, he doesn't really know much about the stock market. It's not, not something he follows very closely. But his timing has always been really good. This is a guy that got out in 2000 um, because he was just, he didn't like what was going on. Um, he got out. And said to me the other day, you know, I, I'm out. I'm not worried at all. It's just that I'm going to have to make a decision as to when when to get in. The guy I, I spoke to this morning, the day after Trump got in, he, he's been out the market forever. I mean, really, since I think 2006, 7, 8. No, 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 I'm sorry, after the de decline. Somewhere around 2009, 10, he was getting out. And then recently just said, I am, I'm fully in the market. I am right up to Yanni. He showed me up to his, his neck. Um, and then he said, I'm going to get out in just a very short while. He said, this has been fantastic. Uh, um, I don't know what, I don't know what Trump is going to do. I don't know what people are going to say. Um, I, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to use this to my advantage and I'll get out. And if it goes high, it just goes higher. So this is saying to me that there are a couple of things going on. So here we go. The E mini is at a peak D in the in the in the daily chart. It's gone sideways. I spent a lot of time. I spent more time on this analysis than it really deserved, but I just felt I had to do it. 
Let me show you something. In the Dow um, daily chart, you see the way when it was going up in November and then went sideways in the middle of November, around about the uh, 15th, 14th, 15th, it went sideways, and then it just slowly went higher. And then it went to peak C and it went sideways, went to D, didn't break down, had inside days for a few days, and then started E, F, and G slash C, where we are right now. <clears throat> there are a couple of things that I said to subscribers this morning. I'll go into it more tomorrow, because tomorrow market's closed. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of work um, uh, for, for, my, for my subscribers, also for my webinar uh, folks who did my webinar on Wednesday night, the second webinar of my three webinar series. I'm going to spend, I couldn't do it this time because it was just the introduction to uh, the moving average of the macro, the MACD and the stochastic. But there's a technique that I developed years ago that essentially says that the Chapwave instant restart can make a G top. In other words, it could, you can call it an alternate wave count. But when it gets to G, start leaning on the G a little bit more if certain things happen in the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence. Now, Peter asks, half day tomorrow or close? I think it's open. We are just, uh, we are closed because uh, Tom uh, decided that uh, it would be very light and uh, great. No, we don't mind. Um, of course, some of us will be <laughs> trading and doing things, but it's still it's nice to have the day off. Um, now, what's really important about this is you see, you see the seven period smooth moving average right here in the Dow daily chart. We've walked not just the nine period exponential moving average, the red line. But that, that kind of bluish line, we've been walking that. That is so unusual. We've been walking it since it broke out back on, uh, I would put it on the 15th of November when that line crossed positive. It has not gone negative yet. I think it's getting close to turning negative. So this is saying to me, we just have one position on the, on the uh, short side of this particular point. I don't think anything else has been activated, although we had a bunch that I'm trying to get uh, today on, on a pop-up. But what's very impo important about this is that the, if this, based on my MACD analysis, is in fact a G, we should, it doesn't, because it's gone from an F to a G, it usurps some of the downside energy, and therefore you don't pull back as dramatically as if it was an F or a G that went in a different manner to the upside. And that says, you know what, we could have tremendous support around about the 19. 1,700, 600 level. This could be a short-term breather. That's a possibility. And, of course, all you need is to break to 19,988. 19, and you start leg D. We're back in the same boat again because now you're at a D. But here's what's really interesting. See these two charts and these charts that I showed uh, uh, subscribers for the last couple of days. How you look at them is really important. Because the one just shows you without the moving average convergence divergence and so slow stochastic, it does have the 200 period moving average way below it, 19,075. It's rare that you go for this amount of time without even getting close to the 200 period moving average. But what's really important, I took it away for, today, uh, for, for today's report. I wanted to keep it in, but it was just getting a little too much to see. That rectangle formation where you have an inside buy signal that goes slightly above the previous high and then pulls back, that is very significant. And that's saying to me in this green line, the 20 period exponential moving average, the 120 minute chart on the left here, that's very important. I'll be back and we do more of this analysis. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank. Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. I was actually trying to find my chapter on the um, it's 11A. Uh, try, try to ch my chapter on, on the whole thing I gave about the, the rare PG. That's the seventh uh, peak. And what it what it means, I, and then there's a particular pattern that occurs within within three sessions of peak F, a certain mannerism, and that I call the smooth peak G. Uh, I'm not going to spend time on that now. What I, I I will do is just say to you that it's real simple. That we really need to close. The Dow needs to close. Is at 19,909 until the Dow breaks 19,820, 19,780. This is just sideways, a sideways move. Let's just keep it that way. Um, so let's get out of that. And I wanted to show you something else that I think is quite interesting. If I can just do this here. Give me one second. Uh, yeah. So within the context of the E-mini, you've got the sideways trading pattern. You've got the arch formation in the... 120 minute chart and if it takes out uh, 2250 2249 uh, support it's going to go quite a bit lower and at this particular point you haven't got the vix running very sharply um, but what's interesting is bonds are not now let's go through the numbers uh, so we've got then that, that, that the qqq series is down 34 cents at 120.10 it made a peak f i've got it with a question mark it really is a peak f the way there's no other way i can count it but the reason the question mark is to say that if it recycles to the upside then i'm going to have to consider that to be g slash c that's just to make it as simple as possible but the weekly chart is the one that says to me the upside in the nasdaq seems to be um uh, a, a bit limited oh question am i taking calls absolutely i'm taking calls why did i forget to look down um let's take our call we're going to go to carlos in miami carlos how are you how are you doing basil i'm sorry to have kept you waiting no i'm good no I'm, I'm so, going to ask about AMD. I, I, I held it from the 850s. Yes. Wow. And uh, but I but I got out I got out somewhere in the 1140s, and I'm I'm thinking about that it could back up to somewhere in the 980, 990s in the, in the coming month. Okay. So then let's do a couple of things here. I. I've followed advanced micro devices. AMD trading at 11.69 of 22 cents. Forever. When I say forever, I mean 
Let me just have a look. I'm going to squeeze this as close as I can. I should have it completely notated from the time I ever started following. There you are, back in the 1970s. And there was a guy, I, I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm sure his name was Sanders. And uh, he was the CEO. He was Mr. Everything. And this stock was just incredible. Oh, I didn't mean to squeeze it that much. Because what it would do is it would have these amazing percentage runs here is i'm just going to pick a date 1977 a low in the uh, monthly chart is somewhere around 0.63 and what does it do it goes peak i think it's a b c d e it goes to peak f where in november of 1980 to seven dollars and 42 cents it then has a little bit of a decline because this is what it tends to do and it drops down to 2.33 60 percent decline September of 1981, and then it goes peak A, B, C, D, recycles in an instant restart and goes A, B, C, D. Oh, another D. And it stops August of 1984 at $20.56. Oh, but then it turns around. And what does it do over a series of, of years? It goes down, down, down. This is actually when Intel was getting really strong. People were kind of ignoring advanced micro devices, but this Sanders always had some trick up his sleeve to make it a very popular stock. Lo and behold, it goes down to a dollar eighty-one October of 1990, and then it has a little bit of a run. It goes peak A, B, C, finally it tops out D in June of 1995 at eighteen dollars and eighty or nineteen dollars. So that's his that's his modus operandi, and then I'll never forget it had that like a single leg spike to the upside. Um, back in July of 1996, it goes from 513 all the way to 2425. And then it plums back, it comes all the way. There are very few stocks that I could find that has this kind of modus operandi. Then it goes to 638, August of 1998, and it starts a little bit of a rally, and that rally goes straight up to 40, and now it's at the highs that it hasn't seen, 48.80. 48.50 in June of 2000, and then it plummets. And what does it do? It comes all the way back down, and it goes to 2003. It's down, at, uh, I think, about $4. Let me just get this moving all the way across. And eventually, it has a low that was made, and that low was made in September of 2015 at $1.72. And here it is at 11.69, and I've got it only in, in leg F slash C. My thinking is it's probably a C because much of the time, it has the D, even the last move up. I'm talking about the monthly because you are talking long term, and that's what I want you to get to. So, old Colonel Sanders, I don't think he's there anymore. Um, he had this way of, of organizing advanced micro devices so that they would always come back from the dead. I really mean the dead, and uh, do something spectacular. <clears throat> I think that's what's happening now. Now, when you look at a uh, stock that I saw yesterday, the earnings last night was uh, strong and micro, um, uh, so Micron uh, Tech is up to, at 23.27, up 2.68, in a way that saved the day for the SMHs, because SMHs, I've got on the watch list for a sharp reversal. I think they are going to reverse, but it would only be, uh, how can I put this? It would be short term in duration, but on a percentage basis, you could see something like a 12 to 15% uh, decline. That's I'm looking at that, I'm not, I'm not saying yet, I've got the signal, it's real close to saying it's gonna pull back. 70.44 is, is the level that I'm watching the nine period moving average. Now let's go back to advanced micro devices. You had a spectacular gain, I have to congratulate you for it because once this is in motion, it just tends to, to move in motion for quite a while. Now I've got it in a potential doji candle peak, a leg F. It might have recycled, but for now I'm just going to be conservative and call it F. The MACD is strong. Stochastic at 96 is very strong. Actually, no, I'm, I have to change that. Stochastic at, let me just see what it is, at about 95 is very strong. Now what do you do? So you don't really want to do, you don't want, you've already had the move. You don't want to jump in now and be whipsawed up and down, up and down, and kind of give back six to eight percent of your gains, just trying to to get in. One of the things I'd be looking at is the way the MACD and the stochastic are acting right now. I still see strength, 
but I see upside an upside limitation right now to about the 1190, maybe the 1230 area percentage wise. That's a very nice percentage. But if it starts to fail, 1096 is the nine period moving area support. And if at any point in the next two weeks it cracks 10.50, let's call it 10 point to be exact, 10.52, it closes under that. My thinking is that the weekly chart is going to have to wait a while before it goes to leg D. So I like your thinking that you want to get back in. Now, this is the difficulty. You might have to do two steps. Um, now, I know you do tend to you do tend to go into something in stages, right? You don't always right. put the whole thing on. Okay. All right. So I, can you? I came in at, in the eights and and low nines, but I got out. Okay. So now, what I think, if you don't mind, can you hold on? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. Great. Okay. Then we'll talk about the way I would enter it. I'll be right back, folks. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. The holiday season is here, and TFNN Salvation Army Tiger Dollar Special is back right now. You can get a 25% bonus on your purchase, and 10% of whatever you spend will be donated in your name to the Salvation Army. The sale only comes around once a year, so don't miss out. Tiger Dollars are a great way to add extra savings to TFNN newsletters or services, and they never expire. Get your Tiger Dollars before the sale ends Thursday, December 22nd, and get your 25% bonus while donating. 10% of your purchase to the Salvation Army. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So, yeah, let me just go through this because we're on with Carlos in Miami. He had a very nice trade in advanced micro devices. He's out now. He wants to know when he can get back in. So I'm going through some of the semis. Um, I'm at uh, supply materials trading at 3301, up 44 cents, having made a high. This is an all time high. Leg C in the monthly, <clears throat> leg F slash B in the uh, weekly chart. Everything about it says it looks like a B at this point. And a leg D with a really good sign that it's about to pull back in the daily chart. So I'm interested because uh, my friend that I often talk about who uh, had had the semiconductor business, it was just bought, uh, he had a surprise call from 
one of his clients to say, I would like to buy you out, and they bought him out. <clears throat> so, and he said, and, and the semiconductor, he said, and applied a material, he said, they're really, really doing well. But you know that I've often used it some, as a counter because sometimes the orders don't quite match what the reality is. So I, I use it sometimes as a counter indicator. But in this case, the, the, in, the semiconductors have been on, on fire. Now, as long as I can recall, <clears throat> people have spoken about advanced micro as some kind of a takeover. And in all the years, what is it, 30 years now? I'm looking at it from the 1970s. No, 40 years. Um, it, it still hasn't been taken over. So that's always out there. So I'm going to do the, the one thing I'm going to do now is to say to you, because I know that you like to sometimes scale in, the ideal situation would be to put, it's 1167, would put a, a buy in at about 975, <clears throat> and then one, okay. because 928 is the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly, and then just one crazy, you put it in, you just kind of forget about it, because you know, we every once in a while there's this flash crash, something happens. But then I put in something crazy at like eight eight dollars and eighty cents, um, which is three dollars. That's thirty something percent down from here. But I just put it in in the meantime, and this is one of the things that I'm looking at. If the semiconductor index starts a consolidation from the way it's rallied up, look how vertical this advanced micro devices. Look at Intel, even Intel, which is kind of sluggish in many ways. <clears throat> has had a very good monthly move. So I'm going to suggest A, B, C. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Look at that, 3689, 3689. <clears throat> Even Intel is very close to some kind of a pullback. So I'm thinking here that we need to speak again okay. because there's a chance that the semiconductors take a sideways move and don't spill down very quickly because it's in an area that seems to be on fire right now. Other times you see an area that's on fire, but usually it's for much longer. They have a very sharp pullback. And we've seen that in some, some, some areas that, were, that did very, very well. So I'm going to say to you, at, it's 11.65. In the 10.96 to 10.56 area, if it gets there, give me a call, what I might suggest is to just get your foot in the water, depending on how the technicals are. The reason being, we might find that it goes sideways for a little bit while it regenerates energy, and then there's another move to the upside because it is one of the areas that fund managers are going to be forced into because it's whatever you look at, and it says these are the sectors that are doing well, fund managers tend to drift there. That's just the way it is. So it might not pull back as much as one would think. And if there's even a hint that some company out there wants to take them over, you've got tremendous support in the in the low tens. So I would okay. rather I'd rather I'd rather say to you just purely technically, I'd love to see it quite a bit lower, then start the position. And if it does start coming down and even gets to the low tens, then I want that outsider that just says, Hey, you just have a big spill to the downside. I want to be nibbling on you. <clears throat> In that, in that instance, I want to just have it there sitting. But if it starts to hold, there's a chance like the XLF did. The XLF was doing nothing, then it rallied, then it went sideways. And then as the election was unfolding, the XLF just took off. And even now, it's holding sideways. It has almost the same kind of pattern and looks like the XLF will, will pull back. But as one of the better sectors we might find that buyers just keep coming in until it, over, it gets really oversold, and then all of a sudden it has a, a whopper of a decline. But in the meantime, I don't want you to miss the next 16 to 20% gain on advanced micro if it just pulls back only a little bit and then wants to go from the low 10s to the 1250s, which there again is a very nice percentage. So I'm, okay. I'm sure, I'm thank, I thank you for pointing it out. I also thank you for giving uh, people listening to TFN a chance to look at these different charts, to see how extended they are, but to see how strong the MACD and stochastic is in advanced micro devices daily and the weekly chart. And that's why I don't want you to sort of set it aside and say, I'm waiting, and then you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. If you need to step in and just start a very small position, let's just give it a week or so and see what happens, okay? Okay, thank you.
And thank you very much for calling, and, and Merry Christmas. Have a great holiday season. Same to you. Thank you. Folks, now the Dow's down 40, and this is really interesting. The volatility index should be rallying. Now, it might be that the fund managers that would do the buying aren't there. So let's go to Jennifer in Wellesley, Mass., the town next door to me in Newton, Massachusetts, uh, right away. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Basil. How are you? I'm just trying to think now. Jennifer, Jennifer, we had something we were looking at, and it wasn't, it wasn't Whole Foods. Oh, what was it? Oh, I was thinking of it just the other day. It was a long uh, time ago. It was Ulta. A long Ulta, time. that's it. Oh, Ulta. Whoa, that's right. Alta, which then took a very serious dive and has come back a bit. Yes, and now you'd like to look at? I'd like to look at Cracker Barrel. Oh, my. I had Cracker Barrel all notated, but I, the other day, I, my, I, my computer, I had to shut it down because it froze. It hardly ever does that. And when it does that, I lose data on charts that I haven't looked at for a while. So uh -huh. I had it all notated. So give me one second. A, B, C, D. Another one. A, B, C, D, E. What are you doing with Cracker Barrel? Well, I own it, and um, a few days ago it went up to 175. I didn't have an opportunity to sell it then, and I'm kind of kicking myself. Um, and I, I guess I wondered, I, I, had, I understood that the um, restaurant stocks were going to be coming back, you know, into favor now, and I didn't know whether to hold it or, or to, to unload it right now. I okay. Wondered. Now, let me just do a couple of things. Well, yeah. You got into Cracker Barrel a while back, right? Yeah, yeah. A okay. Lot. So I'm intrigued by your phraseology because Cracker Barrel hit on a doji candle high of 175.04 on the 20th, which just happens to be three, three days ago. Today it's at 170. So it's four and a half points off. But you've been in for a while, yeah. so when you say you're, you're kicking yourself, basically what you're saying is, I just I had it right and I never pulled the trigger to take something off. That's really what you're saying, because yeah, you have I a good. I wasn't uh, I wasn't in a place where I could uh, use my computer to sell it on that day. Okay, but it is only four and a half points, and you've been in it for a while. So percentage wise, you probably missed. Uh, one, not even one percent, maybe maybe one and a quarter percent from your overall gain. So yeah. let's put that into perspective because I have to first of all say to you, we've got a break coming up. But before we go to the break, I want to say congratulations for picking this as a defensive stock that somehow or other just ignored everything that was going on and went to all time highs. Now let's talk about it when we get back because it won't be more than 10 or 12 cents away from where we leave it right now. We'll be right if you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And I'm looking at this really closely because my monthly count, <clears throat> I either get an E or I get a C. And there's a difference. We're looking at CBRL, Cracker Barrel, at 170.40, down $1.30. <clears throat> but in fact, I'd already made up my mind what I wanted to say to you because <clears throat> once you open your statement as you did, it says to me that you're getting a little bit nervous. You've had a really good gain. And I think, Jennifer, what we should do is just the easy thing to do because the weekly chart, yeah, there's a V-shaped pattern, but the stochastic's at 94%. The MACD's expanding. Um, I don't really want to see you get out of this too soon if it's still going to go to another high. And, yeah. stocks, that have been, and stocks that have been making highs tend to continue doing that until there's a major market correction. Ten yeah. stocks that are making lows tend to continue doing that until there's a major market uh, 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 buy. So I don't want to get you out of this too soon. And since you've already shown that you, you, you're you trying to protect your gain, and at the same time, many of us would like to hold as long as possible, why don't you make it easy? Take one third off here, put a stop in <clears throat> for another third, at about 160, well, if it breaks that, then it fills the gap. So at 159, and it, it might not even get, in the next two weeks, it might not even break 166. <clears throat> and there you're still in it, but you've taken some off. And your core position, I just don't think I would like you. You know, I don't want to get into the way of a beautiful position, not a trade, but a beautiful position play that you've got. You tend to buy and you tend to hold it through a lot of ups and downs. And then you, you're looking at something that's, I'm saying you personally, from what I can recall over the years that we've had these brief conversations. And I don't really want to be the one to say, hey, get out of this because it's done fantastic. And I look, it's looking pretty darn good. And yeah. I'm just going to say to you to feel comfortable. There you are, the tax implications and all that. I tend to say, forget about tax implications. I remember years ago, the gold market was doing unbelievably well. And as we were getting into December, there were a lot of people that said, I'm going to sell in January, I'm going to sell in January. I, mean, I remember saying, you know, I've got a sell signal. If, if I, I'd be lighting up, I'd be getting out because the stock can go down a lot more than with the taxes that you'd have to pay. So think about, you know, think about the tax implication, but it shouldn't be primary. The charge should be primary. And I'm just saying to you, it's holding really well. I don't want you to get out of most of your position just because it's at highs and it's at a D in the daily, which looks with a doji, which looks, looks like it pulled back. Weekly chart is still very strong. So if you can hold off a little longer. So let's do this. If you want to take my advice, right now at 170.60, just take some off and say, hey, I am comfortable. I'm happy as a clam because I've rewarded myself for a really nice position. 
Then the second part will be to say, but now, I, and you can choose where you want to say, I don't want, to, at this point, I don't want to lose anything uh, lower than, and then num make a number, 166, 160, 150. I, it doesn't matter to me, but in your mind, set it up, and then on paper, write it down, and that's it. Put a little sticky note right on your computer and says, if it gets to that level, I'm going to take off my second part. I'm thinking that you're taking off your first, and then the big issue will be in, a, in January sometime, if there's a chance that it can get to 177, 178, that's where you want to make other decisions. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that sounds like a good strategy. I'll take some off now and then uh, hold it and see what happens. Uh, into yeah, I, you know, I think just to have a strategy is the best thing. It gives you some comfort. That's the most important thing. Okay. And just and, and while you're here, I almost forgot. I'm going to be talking on December the 28th at the MIT group over at Cambridge, the, yes, the Boston. I know, I'll, I'll be yeah, there. Yeah, the Boston Investors Group. Oh, good. Come and say hi. I will. I will. All right. Okay. Happy, happy holidays so, to you. Happy holiday to you. Thank you for calling. Uh, it's Jennifer and Wellesley Mass. And uh, let me just tell you, I, I'll remind folks again, but um, it is Wednesday night. I believe it starts at 7. It's the annual birthday bash. I'm the guest. I, uh, very often, I'm the guest speaker uh, the birthday bash, and I'll be doing that on Wednesday night uh, this coming week, the 28th. And looking forward to seeing a lot of you. Come and say hi. Don't just show up there. I want you to show up and say hi. I want to meet you. I want to. I'd like to put the the face to the voice. Um, so let's go on. Now, this is the subtlety that I was talking about. Within the context, let me go back to my uh, chart that I sent, spent so much time on. You see the 120-minute chart, the arch? I did. I kept that arch formation. I said my Chapman Wave 5 might have to be moved over one. That's fine. I have no problem with that. I'm not actually using it in this particular instance here because I've got other things that say that the move that we just saw to the double top at 19,987 19, suggests very strongly that we go into the middle of this bar. That's So far, that's all it's saying. That's number one. Number two is... Within the context of, uh, within the context of millennium major millennium levels, you remember we went through this whole thing with ten thousand yesterday. My belief is that when we go through twenty thousand, it's going to go right through twenty thousand, and then what is it going to do? And then we have to see if it's going to go into the ten the twenty thousand two hundreds. It's just another ball game entirely because it's leaving the twenty thousand and twenty level to the 19,950 level, the, 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 the real breaking point, it's just leaving it in the dust. It's just going right through it like a knife through, hot knife through butter. But if it keeps stalling like this, it's just telling you 20,000 is going to be a little bit of a barrier. Take heed. Um, don't get too carried away on the long side right now unless you're setting up positions because you think, First, like I do, the first quarter of 2017 should have higher highs to come. That's different, um, but that's really what I'm thinking. Now, what I'd like to do is to take a moment to go to, uh, let's see, right here. I wanted to show you something. Had a great question. I can't really answer it right now. I need I need time to think it through, and I will have time this weekend to think it through. Uh, Warren asks, hi, Basil. I'm not sure how to ask this question. It's based on the premise that stock prices follow bond prices. In your Japanization chart, you show bond prices and stock prices moving in opposite directions for 30 plus years. Kind of, let's just say yes, not 100%, but yeah, a lot of the time. Um, in uh, so, is that is that model still intact? There is a temporary model of bond prices sell off and money goes to stocks which is only short-term and shows up mostly in daily charts. If stock prices follow bond prices, as in July 2015, Chinese bond sales, short-term example, shorter-term charts turn into longer-term charts. Greece, for example, bonds down, stocks down. In a longer-term scenario, if Greek bonds would rise in price, Greek stocks would rise price as a longer-term example. This is not an economic question. It's a chart question. I, I appreciate it. I think that's fabulous. You, you phrase it very well. Where is the Bollinger Band start of bond price stock yields chart now in, in its 30-year-plus time frame, uh, Warren? Listener, Denver. So, Warren, let me, let me just do this because 
I, from the weekly chart, I'm going to be extra extrapolating by tomorrow, tomorrow's close, a lot of information. I've already formulated in my mind what I'm thinking. And what I'm thinking is the weekly chart, 30 year, I'm not quite answering your question. I'm just giving you the parameters that are really important to me to be able to say I'm lifting my thematic material for, I don't know how long it is, 15 years, 20 years, the Japanization of our bond yields. Why? And I'll explain why. But I'm not doing it just yet. I'll show you what I'm looking at. I'll be right back. That's the Chapman Tiger Traditions Hour on this uh, last day for us here at TFNN of the week. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with swim lessons brought to you by td ameritrade think or swim next on tfnn hi folks i had a lot of questions i'm sorry i didn't get to them question on, on utx aerospace group you know what i will do that when we get back on a tuesday i believe it's tuesday and uh l let me just do all that um I want to talk about right now because this is what I want you to be watching. I, and uh, uh, Warren, I will. That's a really great question. Let me do some work. I want to still prepare it so that I can also talk about it Wednesday night. I always get uh, questions that just come out of the blue. I mean, things that maybe I hadn't even thought of uh, because there are a lot of fundamental as well as technical analysts there at this this particular meeting. It's really great. There are a lot of people, a lot of good questions. Really looking forward to it. This is at MIT. I'll give you all the data. Uh, next time we talk, um, but you can just um, go to Boston Investors Group Meetup, and that'll be a de a December the 28th, and it'll give you the directions and everything. It's it's fairly easy, very easy to get to, considering it is a MIT. Now, I just wanted to do this in a few couple of moments. Look, the reason why I wanted to spend time, and I spoke about this uh, during my webinar the other night, 
and I spoke about it in my, in my newsletter. I said, there's a chance we might want to be buying a gold stock or two here. I'm not sure yet, and I'll explain what I'm looking at. You see the euro-dollar currency pair? You see the monthly chart, the weekly chart, the way that it's got the arch formation, the way it broke the left side, right side price time frame, the way I've got the Chapman Wave inside wedge that I've had for ages. It hit that line again this week. The, but more importantly, look at the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m formation. If you break the right side, you have one more bar, maximum two, but usually I like it just to be one more bar to close above. That's tomorrow. Uh, in the monthly chart is very important because if the weekly chart is going to kick in and a flat stochastic says it's, it might just bounce, but there's no inner strength at all. I like the V-shaped pattern. So a flat stochastic at 10% is going to be, say it's real tough. I'm watching my VIXI, my, 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 my quartet, which is Dolly, the dollar, VIXI, the volatility index, Goldie, that's gold, and I'm watching the, I uh, sound like, what's his name now? And then the third thing is, you remember? Well, we've got the dollar, the VIX, gold, and why am I forgetting my fourth one? Oh, my God. Oh, I might be able to become part of the administration. Um, Vixie, Dolly, Bondi. Of course, it's Bondi. Bondi is the one. Whew. Thanks for saving me, Terry. Um, so we were looking at this, and I'm saying to myself, okay, if the market is going to really pull back, then you should see some kind of a, re a relative bounce in that those four. The volatility index, dollar should come down. The other two should go up as well. That's uh, bonds. And so you've got volatility index at uh, 1159. Should go into the 13s if this market is going to take a, a thousand and pull back 100. The S&P of 12 points over the next day or two. If that happens, all of a sudden, you should see gold move up about 12 to 16 points. If that happens, you should see bonds, because I wanted to explain this right now. In my looking at the monthly, uh, the weekly chart of bonds, we've gone to a peak E this week. My thinking is that next week we go to an F just above 31.97. Is that chance? Ten year goes to D. Five year goes to D. And that's next week. At the end of next week, going into January, we suddenly see a turnaround. Now, do we have the same as last year? You know, patterns repeat very often. So I'm going to be watching the first couple of weeks because this is the moment that it should go 20,200 because if it's going to be really repelled by the 20,000 level, then you've got to see at least uh, 150 to 275, maybe 300 point Dow pullback before you can re-energize to move higher. And that might be where you get a bounce in, the, in these uh, other areas that I was talking about. So I'm watching it very closely. I just wanted to mention that. I thought it was very important. Now, uh, and that also tells you a little bit about what I'm thinking in the terms of the bond yields. So I'll try to answer that when we get back. It'll be Tuesday. First of all, I want to say, hey, have a wonderful uh, uh, season's greetings, but a happy, a Merry Christmas to you all and a Happy New Year. We'll be back next week. And the second thing is thank you to TFNN for all the things that they do for us hosts. I appreciate it. We all appreciate it. And all of you have a great, great seasonal vacation coming up. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.